Hello everybody, today we have a new episode in Medicine News Podcast to uh, invade new era in uh, infectious diseases. So uh, we need to welcome our guest, Dr. Revolution, General Practitioner. Welcome, Dr. Revolution. Thank you so much, Diana, for again inviting me back to your podcast. So for those who already know me uh, and those who don't know me, I'm Dr. Revolution. I'm based in uh, Dubai, UAE as a general practitioner. I'm also a medical director for Right Health and I'm currently pursuing my specialty in masters in public health, focusing on infectious diseases. So I hope like today's topic would be something relevant to a lot of people uh, that can relate to it. And I hope you can take something out of this session. Yes, great. Yeah, we are so impressed with your medical background, Dr. Revolution, and we are sure you will support us with the vo- uh, valuable insights. So today we will invade uh, dengue fever and how to differentiate and manage and all tips related to dengue fever. So let's just start with the first point is, can you elaborate on the current epidemiology trends and the specific regions must affect it? Okay, before going into the epidemiological trends, I think it is uh, very important for the viewers to understand what is dengue fever. So dengue fever is basically, it is an acute condition, meaning like, you know, you do not get it uh, dengue fever from last six months. So it happens very acutely. So it is usually caused by four different kinds of dengue viruses. And it is usually transmitted through mosquito bites. So what happens is that when a person is sick with dengue, what happens? The mosquito bites that person. So from that, the mosquito will get some blood. So that blood, what will happen? It will be processed in the mosquito's body. And that mosquito, when it bites again to the another healthy person, it will release the virus. So that is how, like, you know, the dengue uh, is acquired, like from one person to another person, how it is transmitted. So this vi- this uh, mosquito that is responsible for dengue virus also causes you yellow fever always also causes you chikungunya and also causes you zika virus a lot of things a single mosquito can make your life very troublesome yes yes exactly i guess it's a maybe a microorganism but can carry mm-hmm. and transmit a lot of diseases as well yes. going back to your question like what is the current epidemiolo- uh, epidemiological trends if we are talking particularly here about uh, uae because I'm based in UAE, so I'll be speaking more on like uh, based on Dubai, UAE itself. So what we have seen is like if we talk about the overall world, of course, every year, like, you know, millions of people get affected by dengue. And out of millions, unfortunately, a lot of people lose their lives, even though it is a very easily and manageable disease. So if you seek uh, timely treatment, then a lot of people can get 100% better from dengue. Uh, but currently speaking in Dubai, you know, we do not have a specific data to tell like, okay, this is the trend of the dengue. However, what I can tell you is that uh, based on my experience, a lot of my colleagues experience who are working in UAE, they have reported, yes, uh, after the rain, that was there was a heavy rain in Dubai on April 16th. So after that, what happened, uh, there is a lot of people who have been suffering from dengue. We've been seeing like a lot of rises in cases. Great. So, Dr. Revolution, uh, in this point, we need to know more details and tips beyond the differentiation between dengue fever and uh, other febrile illness. So, how can we differentiate between dengue dengue fever and uh, febrile illness in our differential diagnosis? So, dengue fever and febrile illnesses, other febrile illnesses, actually, it is for a common person or a normal person who doesn't doesn't have like much uh, medical background it can be very difficult for them to differentiate between a normal dengue fever and a normal cold and flu because the symptoms almost overlaps each other so meaning both of them like if you have flu if you have dengue fever both of you have like you know fever both of you have body pain both of you might have joint pains so for the dengue there are some certain things that you should watch out for like uh, some certain things like you know heaviness at the back of your eye you feel like there is a very heaviness on the back of the eye the muscle pain and the joint pains in dengue are usually very severe so it is not like a normal flu that you have mild body aches and all these things they tend to have more severe like issues other symptoms could be you know some people might have bleeding from the nose or from the gums other could be like vomiting issues or uh, changes in appetite and all of these things so usually 
although the symptoms are very similar if you are not sure consult with your healthcare provider so they can advise you whether this is like uh, dengue and we need to do something about it or whether this is common cold and flu that uh, can be easily managed even if you are at an outpatient basis Great. So, Dr. Revolution, what are the red flags that showed uh, prompted heightened clinical suspicion for severe dengue fever, uh, dengue fever and guide our management approach? Okay, so for this, like there are, we usually say there are like seven warning signs. So, warning signs because we call them warning signs because this is giving you a warning that you might be heading into something that is much worse. So, besides the common symptoms that we talked about just now, fever, headaches, vomiting and all these things so some warning signs are severe abdominal pain so you have fever and at the same time you're having severe abdominal pain that is one of the warning signs the second sign is persistent vomiting meaning like you know you cannot keep any food down you are putting some water you're vomiting out so this persistent vomiting is there other can be like you know signs of any bleeding like you know you're having continuous nasal bleeding you're having gum bleeding other can be lethargic or like the patient is like not aware about what is happening in his surrounding. That can be another thing. Other things that we usually watch out is like, you know, we do some blood test like a CBC and platelet test, we say. So if the patient has like a rapid declining platelet levels or if in the CBC we see there is a rapid increase in hematocrit levels. So these are the warning signs we usually advise our patients to watch out for. So if these are present, we usually advise like to do an immediate consultation. So when we talk about like how do you manage this case? So managing case like it depends like you know it can sometimes people have dengue. Uh, they do not they have mild symptoms. They get better by themselves at home. Uh, some people they come to the clinic, then we do some treatments, then they start feeling better. And sometimes. If there are warning signs present like this, then we, we usually have to refer patients to hospital to get admitted and for further management. Great. So, Dr. Revolution, what are the current best practice for managing dengue fever patients, including fluid management and supportive care? Okay, for the dengue, uh, unfortunately, as of now, we do not have a particular antiviral medications to target the dengue virus itself. So now our current practices usually lie on giving the supportive management. So in line, in terms of management, uh, we usually cannot prescribe much medications to a dengue patient. The mainstay of the therapy is fluid rehydration. So make sure that the patient has adequate fluid intake, or if it is not adequate, if the patient has uh, the severe dengue signs, then maybe IV drips will help. Uh, we, te we tell the people this is very important that you might have severe joint and muscle pains but you're not supposed to take painkillers like you know diclofenac or brufen or this kind of things so because these kind of painkillers can cause more gastric irritation and also increase your chances of having bleeding the other uh, uh, steps in management is usually providing adequate rest and whatever like fever or body pain can only be managed through a paracetamol tablet so besides that, medications will really depend on what other symptoms you might have or what is the severity of presentation in the case. Great. So Dr. Revolution, as you mentioned, there is no antiviral specified for dengue fever. We need to have a little bit about vaccine. So can you discuss the current state of dengue if vaccine, including their efficiency and limitations? Okay. So vaccines, wise speaking, there are usually like two kinds of vaccine that is currently available in the market. So one of the vaccine is, uh, we call it Dengvaxia. So this is usually a vaccine that is a live uh, recombinant vaccine, meaning it's a live virus that has like all four serotypes. So dengue virus is caused by four different strains of the virus. So that's why, you know, people sometimes ask, if I have dengue before, uh, will I have a dengue again? So because it is caused by four different types of virus, so of course, one time you'll have a one virus, next time you can have another virus. So this uh, vaccine, the dengue vaccine has all four serotypes and it is usually recommended for people between 9 to 45 years of age. So of course, vaccine also comes with its limitation. Uh, the limitation being that for this vaccine, if you did not have any dengue in the past, you cannot take this vaccine. So it is important that we check whether you had a uh, previous dengue infection prior to administering the vaccine. Other limitations, uh, other side effects include like common after the vaccine, fever, muscle ache, 
a little bit of body pain, tiredness, and this kind of things. Yes. Uh, the another vaccine is the one I said is like cute dengue vaccine. So that is also like you know uh, one of the newest vaccine re- recommended usually to the similar age group. Okay, and what public health measures can be implemented to complement vaccination efforts? So for this, uh, since we understand now, like you know, what is really causing the dengue, so it is the mosquito that is carrying the virus. So first of all, measures should be focused on those mosquitoes. So how can we take care? Like how can you establishing programs, plans, and policies around how to eliminate these mosquitoes? How to eliminate their breeding grounds so you know uh, that is one of the most important thing and another thing is of course like you know you should make the community aware about dengue imagine like you know how will you prevent a dengue if you do not know what dengue is so main thing is education uh, sending the education like there are many different education you can do a community education it could be online videos that you share around uh, whenever these kind of incidences are there you could uh, broadcast like if the if it, uh, the endemic is rising in a particular country, you can broadcast with uh, TV channels, uh, other uh, vaccination campaigns. The, the, we recently talked about vaccination. So in areas where it is more endemic, we can uh, give vaccinations, the standard testing, and of course like uh, with all this monitoring and evaluating over the time to see which areas are more prone to dengue. So that way, this kind of risk can be eliminated in the future. So these are the measures that I think we can usually take. Great. So, Dr. Revolution, what are some promising advancements in diagnostic and potential new therapeutic options on the horizon? Uh, when you talk about like new diagnostic tests, uh, as of now, I, I couldn't uh, find anything new, like advancement in technologies to detect, detect dengue or something like that. Usually, the test has been the same since mm-hmm. quite some time. But when we talk about advancement in vaccines, there are vaccines like, you know, right now we talked about a vaccine that has to be, uh, you know, the person has to get tested for dengue before giving the vaccine. So right now there are like uh, vaccines in the, uh, there are like uh, researches that are going on in which uh, the person might not need to go under, undergo any kind of test. So there are also other advancement like, you know, uh, the medication, antiviral medications that we talked about. Usually there are many antiviral medications for other viral illnesses. So there are studies evaluating the efficacy of these medications in dengue virus as well. Now, other things could be nowadays, you know, it's gener- we live in a generation of AI. So AI is helpful everywhere. So, you know, Great. using the artificial intelligence to track, like, you know, to see which areas have more dengue. So those areas can be seen monitoring like, you know, mosquito breeding patterns, the disease breeding patterns and all these things. So, I mean, like, you know, given the technology that we have, so given the, uh, you know, uh, people with a lot of experiences on these uh, dengue things. So, of course, we have a lot of new advancements coming on the way, on the horizon, I must say. Great. It's a very good good news for all patients and the physician as well. So, Dr. Revolution, how can physicians working in different areas like critical care and infectious disease best to collaborate to optimize patient outcome? So, this I'll give a perspective from my own practice. Uh, so, for this first thing is like, you know, of course, monitoring the trends. First thing is monitoring the trends, meaning like whenever a patient comes to you, and if you start noticing like, okay, there is one patient, there is two patients, there is 10 patients, 15 patients coming with the same illness. And now you're starting to suspect this is a dengue virus. So one thing is monitoring. And as soon as you monitor, you do a surveillance to see like, you know, where these people are residing in. So monitoring and surveillance is one of the most important thing. And as soon as you have the proper data to collect that, okay, I'm seeing this kind of cases that is rising here. You can, you know, coordinate with your colleagues on different parts of the, I mean, different parts of, like, for example, for me, in different parts of the way, I coordinate with my colleagues to see that uh, if they have the similar cases like they are encountering. So one is surveillance, uh, monitoring surveillance and uh, data uh, dissemination within our colleagues or within the group of people. Uh, Another should be like, you know, since Denke, like I said, sometimes it can be managed uh, at an outpatient clinic. Sometimes it needs a referral to the hospital or uh, uh, more of a hospital scenario, I must say. So in those cases, there should be a proper and effective communication between the 
specialist and the general practitioners like myself so we can optimize the patient care other things are like you know uh, regarding advice regarding vaccinations like you know usually what happens in a busy setting sometimes uh, vaccination most of the people uh, do not prefer to take vaccinations because one of the limitations is that you should have a dengue test so when you tell them you have to do a test then they will think like okay well, this doctor is telling me to do unnecessary test but actually that is not the situation because to give a vaccine we have to know whether you have had dengue before or not so of course like education and awareness like you know and of course uh, podcast sessions like this like you know from one professional to another professional discussing about like how we can manage dengue how we can like spread awareness and of course these things are very helpful and one of the main thing is of course continuous education of the general public and as well as the medical community on the latest advanced advancement so a latest treatment can be administered to the patients who require it yes exactly and i'm so nervous trying to contribute a little bit about this collaboration and the medical awareness so dr mm-hmm. revolution finally i need to thank you so much for this great uh, and amazing episode about dengue fever and hopefully to uh, create a whole series related to uh, diseases that transmitted via mosquito only mm-hmm. it will be great to increase awareness and uh, increase or, or optimize patient outcome Thank you so much mm-hmm. Dr. Revolution and I hope to see you again in different episodes. Sure. Thank you so much for inviting once again and once again I hope like this was a fruitful session like you have a more understanding for people who are watching. I hope you have a better understanding on dengue and the signs and symptoms and you know do not hesitate to seek uh, treatment whenever you have this kind of issues because the longer you wait the worse the symptoms can get and the worse the symptoms get the more expenditure you might incur on your treatment so yes. if you have any of the symptoms definitely do a consultation and thank you once again for inviting and please thank subscribe you. and like medicine apps as well <laughs> thank you so much dr revolution and hopefully to create our series as well thank you no